So it's the end of officially day one in Laos. Laos? Laos. <laughs> Who knows? Everything's there. Like, it's clearly an impactful story that's worth telling. I just don't know how, how to, to present it. How do you do that? How do you take something that's so significant and makes your life so insignificant and try and capture it in five minutes or less? My name is Savan Sagar. My name is Gabi Asifranavichis. We are both 17 years old, rising seniors at Santa Barbara High School in Santa Barbara, California. In the spring of 2013, we experienced the remnants of the secret war in Laos. Meanwhile, fighter aircraft are poised to swoop down and rake Viet Cong troop concentrations, munitions dumps, and supply areas. Our preliminary introduction to the secret war was that Laos was an alternate route for the South Vietnamese communists to get supplies from the north to the south during the Vietnam War. The United States government bombed the country of Laos to cut off the trafficking of supplies, leaving the country in devastation that still haunts its citizens today. Part of the modern day devastation is found in what are called unexploded ordnance, or UXOs, which are cluster bombs that are currently scattered throughout Laos in farmlands and cities. Through our travels, we found that the truths we uncovered about war, poverty, and UXOs align themselves perfectly with the six stages of grief. These stages reflect our perspective and what we feel embodies the Laotian people's experience. It was shocking that nobody had really taught us this. We were given figures and statistics with an intention of relaying the severity of the situation, but it wasn't truly understood until we saw it. There is such a lack of awareness that becomes a denial of not knowing what our country is capable of or what they've done in the past. It is surprising that this is such an issue after 50 years and it feels like nothing is being done. There is a guilt in the lack of awareness of the situation and we empathize with both the physical and emotional pain of the victims and their families. The guilt resides in the fact that our country was at fault and yet has done so little to mitigate the damage. The guilt is blatant when visiting families like Ye Lee's where the father and primary caretaker has been left dismembered. This type of accident has forced the oldest of his six children, his 15-year-old son, to leave school to take his place. These individuals are trying to provide for their families when the UXOs America dropped 50 years ago alter their lives in tragic and fatal ways. Clearly, we should be angry with the past U.S. government. They violated the Geneva Accord, killed and injured countless individuals, and it seems that countries are still attempting to bargain the best deal in providing aid to the victims while keeping expenses low. One victim took us into his backyard where a UXO bomb still resides, even after the bomb extraction team, COPE, had already been there to clear the land. The lack of efficiencies in the Loatian programs and the minimal role of our government is frustrating. We are reminded how lucky we are when interviewing Ye Lee's son. He now has the responsibility of providing for the whole family and also must sacrifice his own ambitions of school and city life. Mr. Lejeune was left blind and with painful and permanent injuries in his arms and hands after a UXO accident in his backyard. His one wish was to see his two little girls, the youngest of whom he only got to see for six months after her birth and before his accident. He feels ashamed that his wife must now become the caretaker of their children and his parents. It is really so impactful to see the accomplishments of the victims. It seems like throughout our trip, we were constantly exposed to individuals who were making the best of their situation. Fonsavon really comes to mind. At age 15, he found a UXO, and while showing off to his friends, it exploded in his hands. This left him dismembered and blind. Since his injury, he has developed amazing new skills, including breakdancing, learning English, working on a computer, typing with his tongue, and recording his own music. His resilience provides hope for other victims as well. After our trip, we definitely gained awareness and acceptance of the severity of the tragedy. 
The current Loatian generation has to suffer the repercussions of war despite having nothing to do with the conflict that occurred 50 years ago. Likewise, we as young individuals have to accept responsibility in aiding those less fortunate and renovating the mistakes of past generations. Though it is not our fault, together we have learned it's a moral obligation to help the Loatian people who started with so little and had so much taken away. Aiding the Loatian people is not a complex or strenuous action. It can be done easily throughout the countless organizations or by providing financial aid. We hope to promote awareness and to encourage the success of national Loatian organizations. But additionally, we want to show that it's possible to make a difference as a teenager. Savin and I got involved and we didn't change the world, nor are we asking you to. But even just by helping a handful of families and spreading awareness, we made an impact on countless lives already. The easiest way to help the current and future generations is to just become more politically aware. As the upcoming policymakers and voters, it is our duty to maintain an awareness of the world around us. We hold the true potential in what we choose to support and aid, and that potential is useless to the uninformed individual. <laughs>